everybody, it's Mike from Get Fit Over 40 and we're doing video three. So this is my third workout. Now, <clears throat> it's actually my fifth workout of the week because I generally start on Monday, but we're starting the shooting on Tuesday. So Tuesdays, basically with shoulder day, I did two workouts on Tuesday and I've recorded them both. So this is Wednesday now, we're here Wednesday and I'll only be doing one workout today and that'll be basically my back and arms, maybe a little bit of abs at the end. We'll see how it goes. And I'll be doing a lot of it using my functional trainer here. This is the uh, FT2 Inspire Functional Trainer. I'll be using a lot of cables. Now I've done a couple back workouts using the cables, strictly just the cables, hooking into different positions. It works really good. I might actually use the pull-up bar. You know, it's great. Doing natural pull-ups is great. And I might even put a strap across me to add resistance. We'll see how it goes. Right now I'm not feeling it because usually at the beginning of most of my workouts, I'm not feeling it, I'm feeling a little stiff. You know, so it takes me a little bit. I'm gonna be doing some lighter reps just to begin with, or lighter sets, lighter weight with a little higher reps just to begin with, and then go from there. So we're gonna start with a wide, basically a wide pull down, and uh, I'm gonna start pretty light. Actually, what I gotta do is get my heart rate monitor going before we start. So let's get that going, because that's important. I wanna record that data. So I'm actually recording the data on my heart rate monitor and if I go I'll show you here it'll even tell me my heart rate pretty cool okay so right now we're at 92 94 I have a high heart rate especially if I'm standing around especially if I'm about to do a workout it's like my body anticipates it if I was sitting down I'd probably be about 70 ish but you know when I'm standing around walking around getting ready for a workout I'll be up in the 90s for sure all right so we're ready to go we're not going to go too hard on this I'm just going to go with some lighter weight here, not too bad. And we're just going to, I'm not going to use wrist wraps just yet, but I will eventually start using wrist wraps on the heavier sets. Uh, and I'll explain why. I, I do that because I'm not, you know, I'm not a power lifter. I'm not really worried about grip strength for things like deadlift and that, because it's just not something I have to worry about. Uh, you know, I don't need Popeye forearms. Anything like that, as long as my forearms aren't looking too weak, then I don't need to really worry about my grip strength too much. What I do have to worry about at my age is carpal tunnel. I've had flare-ups before where my wrists have just become so inflamed in here and my fingers started to go numb. And once that happens, it's almost like a, you've got to really lay back, lay off of things before the inflammation starts to go down. So instead of letting that happen, I just wear my, uh, my, my straps, you've seen me wearing them throughout this video, especially for things like back because you're doing a lot of volume, a lot of heavy weight and I like to strap in for that. Okay, let's do my first set. This is a pretty easy one. I like how it's isolated between each, each arm is independent. This is more of a warm up. Not even counting, I'm just going by feel. Felt good. All right, so that's the first set. All right, we're gonna hook in here because uh, I'm just starting to get, you know, it's getting heavier and I don't want my forearms to get all tired out just yet. So we're gonna hook in and do a bunch of reps here then. Exact same exercise. Alright, so at this point we're just going to do some pull-ups. I'm actually going to go into pull-ups. It's kind of the same thing, but I want to get into... The problem with this is I don't have anything to tie my lower body into. 
and I'm pretty close to the ground because of the position of this, so I can really only sit on my butt and do it. And it's great for doing a higher rep, a little bit lower weight, and you get a really good pump. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, but if I want to do a little heavier weight, my whole body weight, I would be pulling myself off the ground. So if I'm going to be pulling myself off the ground, I might as well use the pull-up bar and do it that way. So here we go. I haven't uh, used this one just yet, so this is the first really using the pull-up bar. <clears throat> I'm sure it'll be just fine. Go fairly wide, not quite to the ends. Get rid of my slippers. Not too professional. Those are pretty strict, so they're not exactly easy, and I like to totally disengage, not, not bounce out the bottom, just get a true pull. So the next that I'm actually going to use a strap, I'm going to give it a try, and I'm going to actually add weight to my body using the strap and the pulleys. So that should hopefully work okay. Alright, so I've got the strap set up. I don't have much weight on here, maybe uh, it's basically 20 pounds, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 pounds. Just adding an additional 20 pounds to my body weight. Uh, I just want to give it a try, you know, I don't want to go nuts here, this is the first time I've used it, see how it feels. Uh, you know, maybe later on I'll add some more, but it's just, you know, you always want to start out a little bit light, you don't want to start out too heavy when you're doing something new. So I'll take my own advice. Okay, I should move these down a little bit. Wow, that worked really, really well. I'm, I'm impressed. You know, it was a nice, smooth, um, a nice, smooth addition of weight, so it didn't really feel like I had it on there. It was pretty neat, actually. You feel a little pressure on your shoulders, but it didn't feel like, you know, when you have the weight around your belt or your waist, you get this weight hanging between your legs. It's always uncomfortable. This felt really good, so next time I do it, I'll try a little more weight. All right, I'm all set up here. I've got my, uh, basically I've attached it to this, these middle positions here. I've got to add some weight on these things a little light, but I've uh, got my weight. I've got my straps right here, and uh, we're going to do a basically narrow pull down. I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to move over. I'm going to do two sets on here, and then I'm going to move over and do the actual bar and do chin-ups. So we'll go a little, a little bit heavier here than before. It will start on 15s. <clears throat> If you hear any noise, it's because this, uh, this is my house and my kids are doing stuff. Right now my daughter's home and for some reason she's wearing my wife's high heel shoes, walking around. It's making quite a noise. So if you hear weird noises and dog sounds and things, it's just normal.
So at this point, I'm actually getting pretty close to my body weight. I've got it on the 17, the number 17, which I believe is about 170 pounds. But it's with all the other stuff going on and machine resistance and whatnot, it's getting pretty close to my body weight. So when I really give it a good tug at the bottom, my body wants to lift up. So it makes it a little challenging without you know someone holding you down or something. I guess it's a little bit of a limitation of this machine. I can't really tie my legs into anything. There's something to hold me down. But what I can do is when it gets a little bit like that, I can start doing individual arms. So if I'm pulling with one arm, I'm not pulling up so much weight and I'm not going to pop off the ground as much. So I'll, I'll probably do that a little bit in this video. I'll get my headphones on. Okay. See, I barely come down. And as I pull, I come off the ground. I'll start a little bit, slowly. Gotta go a little slower. Good though. Really focus on that one arm. It's almost beneficial doing one arm at a time because you can really focus on that one arm as opposed to just sort of pulling it down with two. You can really feel it when I do use the one arm at a time method. Everybody up there, thought I'd move the camera somewhere kind of interesting, so I've got it up high. Hopefully, it doesn't fall off my chair. Well, if it does, it does. It's an action cam, so if it falls, it's probably going to take it. Anyways, we're going to do some chin-ups, an arrow chin-ups here. This set I'll just use body weight. The next set I'm going to use that strap and maybe even try a little more weight. I probably won't get as many reps, but I'm going to try it just for fun and see how it feels. I'm going to play around and try things, make it interesting. Otherwise, these workouts get boring. The more you change it up, the better it is. One more. Alright. Wanted to leave a little bit next for the next set, so didn't totally go to failure there. Pretty close, but next set, gonna go to failure, obviously with additional weight. Well, I thought I'd leave my camera up there. It took me a while to get it set up, so why not, right? Um, so we're gonna use a strap here. I've got basically four plates, so it's about 40 pounds, roughly, of extra body weight or weight added to my body. So I'm anticipating this one being a little bit harder. Hey, if working out was easy, then everyone would be on the cover of Shade Magazine, GQ, Maxim, whatever, you know, if it was that easy, right? So it's not supposed to be easy. You know, it does get easier as you do it. It almost becomes enjoyable. I like the feeling I get. I enjoy the feeling afterwards especially, and even during, once I get warmed up. It's the beginning of the workout that's hard. I think the middle and end is, is pretty pleasant actually, once you get into it. So. Right now I'm, I'm talking because I'm trying to let my heart rate go down just a little bit. People ask me what should uh, I let my heart rate go down to between sets. Everyone's going to be different. I like to let mine go down to about 130. Between 130 and 140 it depends what I'm going to be doing. But if I'm going to be doing a hard set, like this is my last heavy set, this one I'll space out a little bit more than my previous sets because this is my hardest working set and I want to let my muscles just recover a little bit more than the other sets. All right. That feels a little heavier. I 
I'm anticipating this to be a little ugly. So I'm thinking maybe six to eight reps. I don't really know. so bad. Definitely hard to finish it out. Wasn't sure if, if the uh, straps would actually get in the way of my arms from the narrow grip, but it, they just they just went by it so it was okay. So definitely love these straps. Makes for an easy way to add resistance on things like pull-ups. And likewise, I'm not sure if you know this, but I can I can actually bring these down or actually sorry leave them in this position. I'll just show you something cool. Let's say I have trouble doing pull-ups. I can actually, put my, don't do that. Probably put my feet on it. Okay. So, I can do, it'd be best to put your knee in it or something like this, but I can assist my pull up using the strap. But you gotta figure out the best way to do it without breaking your gym. So anyways, nothing broke, which is good, because that was kind of a bit of a fall. And, uh, Lost my headphones, smashed my gym up. That's how you learn things. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna do rows next and see how that goes. Um, basically, I'm gonna be doing them off the floor. You'll see it in a sec. All right, guys, I'm set up for my basically my rowing, and I'm hooked into these individual pulleys again, individual hands, which is nice because it allows me to, you know, I can see it's it's just a little easier. I can constrict each muscle separately. If I want to do one at a time at the end, I can do it. And you know, I was gonna put on my, my nice uh, shoes, but to be honest, this is how I work out. I work out on my slippers half the time when I need to work. I haven't been wearing them. I usually take them off because I don't want to get them all sweaty, but if I need to do something like this, I just throw my slippers on and away I go. And uh, to be honest, I usually don't wear this really fancy clothing either when I'm working out. Sometimes I just wear my underwear because I stay cooler and it's less, uh, it's less laundry for my wife. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not gonna do that to you though. Alright. Round number two here. Probably gonna do four sets. It's the only roll I'm gonna do today. I will be doing another back exercise after this. Uh, I'll show you that when it happens. But just basically going up one plate at a time. Super smooth. Now I don't, a couple tips here, I don't really necessarily count my reps. I mean, I have a, an idea of what's going on. I know I'm shooting for 12 to 15 usually on my first set, 10 to 12 on my second set, maybe 8 to 10 on my third, 
and six to eight on my fourth, and then I'll drop set sometimes, depending on what machinery I'm using. Like this time, I'm gonna drop set it for sure. But, you know, that's just, just what I do. It's sort of like, I, if you've done this for a while, you just kind of know. And for me, going lighter, building up is good. It's just good for my older body. I don't like to jump into anything too quickly. I can get to those, I can do the light, high rep sets mixed in with heavy sets and drop sets all at the same time. So it's like I'm getting the best of both worlds all the time and it seems to work for me. It's working for me, so I'm gonna stick with it. There are times when I go just all of a sudden really do a lot of high rep sets. Not very often though, and sometimes I just do heavy sets, but not very often. To be honest, I pretty much stick with what works, which is the building up and down. The thing I've been doing lately is really taking my time on the negative and then getting a really quick, a sort of an almost burst on the, on the actual loaded, when I'm loaded and I'm doing the actual rep. So in this case, when I'm pulling back, I try to do it nice and quick and then I do a real slow release. And I try to do that on some, some of the stuff that I work with. All right, set number three, incrementing the weight a little bit as we go. I might do some individual arms at the end on these heavier sets, just to concentrate on each side independently. Again, using the wraps because why not? Using the wraps let me, lets me focus on my back and my biceps and contracting rather than trying to not think about dropping the weight. Doing the individual arms gives each side a little bit more time between reps, which allows you to maybe do a few extra reps too. So that's another advantage to doing them independently. All right, we're uh, set up for the last set. I, I basically adjusted the plates up to uh, two plates. So I'm doing another basically 20 pounds more because I'm trying to shoot for that six to eight reps. Oh, it should be somewhere. I might even do a few more. We'll see here. I'm gonna probably do some independence. So it might be more than that, but it's gonna be harder for sure. And then I'm gonna drop set it drop it by two plates at least two to three times. Hopefully I don't bump into my tripod. I'm straddling it, or it's straddling me. I'm not sure which. So if you see it bumping around, it's because it's in a precarious position. All right. Okay. Drop it two plates. They're pretty burnt out. Won't take much. One more time. So what's great about these uh, plate style systems, dropping sets is so easy. That's it. It's a good workout. Still more to come. So this exercise still works the lats. What I'm doing essentially is I'm just, uh, I like this bar because it gives me a little bit more natural 
grip position as opposed to being like this, harder on the wrists, easier on the wrists. This would be really hard on the wrists. It's at about the right distance, just a little tighter than shoulder width. I'd normally like to go a little bit wider, but it works just fine. And it hooks into both pulleys on either side. Just got to make sure you use the same weight on both sides, everything's good. So this is great for developing the muscles in here and all inside here as well, all underneath your armpits. Awesome exercise. Sort of light. Go up to parallel at least. This is more of a warm up. I'll do at least four sets. This is a little bit light, but that's okay. I don't mind going a little light on my first set. It gives me an idea where I need to be. If I can go light on the first set, I always just add a little more on the next than I thought of, and I was going to at least. And then we're good to go. We're back on track, so it's not a big deal. The first set is just sort of your figure out the, figuring out the range set. Especially if you're doing something new and you're, you haven't used that machine or you haven't used that machine in a while. All right, set number two. I'm gonna drop the shoes again. I don't need the flippers. Alright. Definitely increase the weight, feeling it. Good for the core. Works the stomach at the same time. Just trying to keep your body straight. good way for me for the second set. All right, set number three, and uh, it's getting harder, that's for sure. Nice and smooth. Tiny bend in your arms is okay. away for the next set. I won't get a lot of reps, but I'm going to be doing a drop set anyways. So I will get a lot of reps. All right, so last set for uh, this exercise, and this is going to be the last set for me for back. We'll be moving on to biceps. I'll do a couple different exercises for biceps. I don't have a lot of trouble with arms. To be honest, you hit arms throughout the week anyways. When you're doing all your pressing and pulling, you're hitting your arms the front and the back. Anyways, and you know, if you don't have small arms, you don't have trouble building arms, and you don't need to go nuts on them, at least I don't. I'm, I'm happy with where they're at. So just keep it, just do a short, intense arm workout, basically about eight sets, so four sets of each exercise will finish it off. Now, I was gonna say something, and it's completely left my mind. Oh yes, after this, sometimes I'll do a rear delt type thing, this type of thing on back day just to hit the rear delts because it sort of ties into the back. But I did shoulders yesterday and I hit my rear delts pretty good yesterday so there's really no point in hitting them again. I'll probably, on Saturday, which is an auxiliary day when I just do extra stuff, I'll probably hit them then. So this is going to be a drop set. It's going to be a little ugly at the beginning. I'll have to use a little bit of body language. That's all right. Drop it two plates. Oh, drop. This will be my last drop. Oh, it just starts to get too easy almost. At least with this one. That 
that's it. So that's it for my lats and my back. And now tomorrow is Thursday. It's actually deadlift day for me. So doing back on Wednesday is an ideal for deadlift, for getting optimal deadlift results. But I will be hitting back again tomorrow with deadlifts. Kind of gets that lower back a lot right in, in the bottom, which I don't hit as much doing what I did. A little bit with the rows, but the deadlift is going to hit that really good tomorrow. All right, next you'll see some uh, bicep stuff. All right, so we're going to do some biceps, and I've got my bar, same bar as I used last time. I just brought the pulleys down lower here, and I'm just going to start out light because I like to get my, especially my elbow joint, like right in here, needs to be warmed up. Especially when you do pull-ups and stuff, you can get some sort of tendonitis problems, joint problems in here. So I like to just make sure that I'm warmed up before I get into the heavier reps. This bar is a little rough, so I've got my gloves on. They uh, don't keep my hands looking too nice, but they help. do five sets sometimes that's what I do so if my first four sets were too light whatever I just do a fifth set right the whole point is to get to that hardest working set your last set where you give it everything where you go right to failure and then some that's the whole point of it all all right set number two basically just went up one plate probably looking at a rep range of about 15 reps for this one a little higher than normal, but that's okay. starting to feel the pump those high rep first two sets definitely fill your uh, muscle up with blood and give you that pump it's funny uh, with biceps I find that they have more peak when they're not filled with blood as soon as you start getting that pump they kind of flatten out but they get bigger they just flatten out a little bit On the, this is my third set, I should be around, I guess, 10 ish. It was a little higher than that. That's okay though. Like I said, biceps, not such a bad thing to do higher reps with, at least for me. I find I get injuries, especially in here, when I go too heavy and try to go too crazy with uh, doing any type of curl. All right, so last set of the basically this curl bar to the pulleys. Um, I'm going to do a light drop set, but not a crazy one because I've still got lots, I've still got a whole other four sets to do of individual arms. So I'm going to hook up the individual arm pulleys and do individual arm ones. So that's going to be my next set or my next exercise. So I got to leave a little bit in the tank for those guys. I forgot to add weight. That felt too easy because it was. Alrighty. Gotta pick these up straight otherwise this happens. There we go. Come on. <laughs> Alright, we're good to go. That's it here.
drop it. I'm gonna drop it two plates. Just get a good pump. some individual arm curls. All right, a lot of times I actually hook into these guys, so the pulleys over here. So I hook in one of these guys, but I've decided that, um, and you get a little further out, so I'd be a little further out, but I decided to um, hook into the bottom one, the same ones I hooked into for my rows, just so that I'm pulling a little bit more up the center. I'll get some different camera angles when I do it, but there's so many ways you could do it. I could pull the uh, pulley system up high and actually pull it straight out like this. So I'd be pulling like the weight towards me like this. I did that last time. So this time I'm gonna do it basically off the floor and do more of a traditional curl. Just one arm, or one arm at a time. But again, starting out pretty light. Same thing, different side, a little bit more weight. Again, just um, doing it one arm at a time there just gives you a little bit more rest time in between each arm so you can get a few extra reps in. Set three. Last set coming up. Last set here, I even added some backlighting here or fill lighting because the backlighting was so bright, you couldn't see me. Uh, so we're gonna do this and this last set, I'm gonna do a drop set. After this, I'll do sort of a quick ab thing, sort of abs slash a little bit more lats again because of the way that I plank it. It's like a, basically a, I forget what it's called. I don't remember what it's called, lever or plank or something. You'll see. And then I'll do some leg raises. This will probably be my only drop. Pretty tired. That's 
that's it. That's it for biceps. That's all they need. All right, so a little bit of abs slash back next. All right, we're almost near the end here, and uh, I really don't know how well I'm going to do on these ones because my back's tired, my biceps are tired. I'm really tired. I think we're getting close to like an hour and a half workout here. I'll know in a second. I'm probably only going to do two sets of these because they're really tiring, and like I said, it does your does your core, your abs, it does your all the back supporting back muscles, and it's not easy to do. It takes a little bit of practice. I do like to tie in. Again, so I can concentrate on less on my grip and more on trying to get this done. Now, unfortunately, I can't get a full extension because the floor is too close. This gym does allow for this to be adjusted higher, but I'd be too close to the ceiling in my light, so I'd rather on the lowest setting. If I had on the highest setting, I'd be up elevated off the ground more. So I kind of have to come up. A little bit off the ground already, so it's almost harder because I don't get I get less swing. But this is what I'm trying to do. Once it gets pretty much ugly looking and I don't feel I'm doing it right, then I go in and I do a, basically like a leg, or it's called toes to bar. I don't even really touch the ground so I don't get any swing I don't come down all the way and I have to start from that really awkward position and kick it right back up it's harder okay I'm happy to say this is my last set it's been a really long workout as soon as I'm done I'm gonna stop the timer see what I, the actual workout length was I'm gonna say it's probably a good hour and a half um, you know I'm gonna have probably 45 to 50 minutes worth of footage this time because I've been chatting a lot more after making my first two workout videos, I thought, you know what, I need to talk a bit more. I need to comment a bit more what's going on because there's some information that I have that I think might be valuable to some of you guys. And also give you a reason to watch videos. You might be just skipping through them and you're going to miss all this stuff. So now there's all this valuable information that I'm talking about inside of there. So you're going to have to watch the whole video, I guess. All right. Last set. Getting too ugly. I got five more. These are hard, these are tired. One more. Oh. <laughs> that was ugly. All right. Let's see where we're at here. Heart rate's at 161. Oh. It's going down already. 155. It's going to drop. All right. Oh, well, there it was. Hour and 29 minutes. All right. So that's the workout. I generally let it run. I'll let this run until, until I get down to uh, about 130 beats per minute and then I stop it. So I'm at 147. I'm going to wait till my heart rate goes down to about 130 then I'll start stop the session because 
when you start the session, it takes a while for your heart rate to get up to speed. When you stop the session, it takes a while for it to get down. So I figure it evens out. And that's my workout. So hope you enjoyed it. Again, I've been wearing this heart rate strap and it's, uh, it's recording all the heart rate stuff. So check out in a second here, I'll be posting a picture of that. It's gonna tell you my average heart rate, my max heart rate, how many calories I burned, the length of the workout. And uh, that's pretty much it. You'll see a little graph there too. I'll also put a link in the description so you can actually go and look at it and play around with it. Look at the actual charts on their own. And on my video, on my website as well, there'll be a link to this, to this uh, heart rate monitor session through Garmin. All right, thanks for watching another Get Fit Over 40 video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Till next time, take care.